Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. We're doing things a little bit differently today. We are doing both an art topic and a book topic. So if you are only here for the book content, you can go ahead and skip my little ramble about what's going on. I will put a timestamp up. I will probably have it broken down in the timeline down below. If you are here for the art as well, or if you are just here for the art, well, the art is going on over here on this side of the screen. I am doing digital art, doing more digital art. This is a follow-up to the previous digital art video I did where I was making some template art for my fake horses on the horse game that I explained in the previous one. The reason why I'm doing these kind of art pieces in this split talking about book videos is because I, I don't know what else to talk about with those particular pieces. Those pieces have a purpose, but it, I don't think it's going to make for very interesting chatting content. So we're also going to do book stuff. Today I want to talk about Kevin Hearn's latest series. Inconsiderable is both the name of the first book and the name of the series. I intend for this video to go out on Tuesday the 10th. It's probably gonna go up a bit later in the day because I'm probably still going to be finishing the art piece you're watching in the morning. But the second book in this series, Paper and Blood, publishes on Tuesday the 10th. I have an arc. I have read it. I want to talk about this. I also want to talk about the series that this has spun off of. The Iron Druid Chronicles. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jenna. I am a freelance editor slash illustrator. I am a book blogger. I do a lot of book reviews and I also just love coming on here on YouTube. I talk about books more often. I am doing art kind of like what you're seeing over there, but usually it's traditional art. I love to just draw whatever comes to mind. I love to do art supply reviews. I love to do my no box art box challenge, which you can look up. I have playlists for it. I like to collaborate with other artists. I like to talk about things that are going on in the world while I paint and draw and whatnot. And sometimes we switch it up and we talk about books. So if any of that seems like your kind of deal, don't forget to hit the subscribe button before you leave. And everybody watching, if you could do me a favor, help me appease the algorithm overlord, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, Maybe even if you feel inspired to do so, share this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. Brief little chat about the Iron Druid Chronicles. First of all, let's just explain what this is. So this Shattered, this is the eighth book. This series has nine primary novels and then it has a bunch of short stories and novelettes and novellas that kind of fill out the story, kind of bolster the story. And I have read most of the shorter works. I thought I had finished the main series. This is the furthest along in the series I actually physically have on my shelf, which is suspicious. See, when I was really into this series, I wasn't super into ebooks yet. I don't have the ninth ebook in my ebook collection. That doesn't necessarily mean I didn't have it. I have had issues with e readers in that time since I also had all of these books in another province at my mom's place. So it's also entirely possible that I did have the ninth book and it just never made it here. But it's starting to seem more and more like I actually didn't finish this one, like I thought that. The eighth book here, Shattered, was the last book. Scorched, the ninth book, is the last book. And that makes so much more sense. The second book in this series, which we're gonna talk about, it has a lot of spoilers for this series, I will say that. And there's stuff in it that, like, I've been reading through it and I've been thinking like, I, I don't remember that happening. And it makes, it just makes so much sense now. I've been saying that I was so upset with how this series ended. It felt like a TV show that got cancelled before the writers were done with everything that they'd been laying down and teasing to us. Because I didn't actually read the last one. So questions answered, but also the questions that have been answered by the second Inconsiderable book, I'm not so sure. I'm really excited to read the actual last book in this series. I did place a Libby hold. I will be listening to it in audiobook version when I have a break in my review schedule. Well, I'll review it too, but like, I feel like I should go back and review the whole series. I haven't explained what this series is yet. If you've watched all of my book content, you have seen me explain it, but you know, we have Atticus. His actual name is Sheehan O'Sullivan. 
He goes by Atticus. He is an ancient Irish Celtic druid from before the current era. He's over 2,000 years old. He has figured out how to brew a tea that keeps him and his dog Oberon young, forever, essentially immortal. They can be killed, it's very hard to kill them. He's called the Iron Druid because he has infused cold iron into his aura to protect himself from the gods and the fae, and this is a world where every god from every pantheon actually exists, and this guy has been systematically pissing them all off getting himself into trouble. I don't want to spoil too much about this series because if you haven't read it, you need to. You're gonna love it. If you like fantasy, you're, you're gonna like these ones. At least the earlier books. A lot of people weren't so happy with the later ones and I gotta say, like, partway through we do get a love interest and by this one, by the eighth one, I just didn't care anymore. The chemistry was gone. So I get it, people not being so enthusiastic about this series as it came to an end. I really liked it. I wasn't ready for it to end at this point. <laughs> Maybe when I read the ninth one I will have been ready for it to end, I don't know. Ink and Sigil. This one published August of last year, so this book is a year old now. I pre-ordered this one, I have had it sitting on my shelf the whole time. I only recently listened to the audiobook to get it out of the way so that I could read the arc of book two in time for publication day. So this is a spin-off of this. This takes place in the same world. Our main character is Al, short for Aloysius, but only the gods call him that. Everybody just calls him Al. And he's Scottish. He's working for the same Celtic gods, the Tuatha de Dinan. Sorry if I've pronounced that horribly. He's a sigil agent. Atticus, for most of his life in like the last thousand years of that, has been the only surviving druid on Earth because the druids were pretty much wiped out and he had to go into hiding because he had pissed off too many of the gods. They were out for blood. So Breed had to create sigil agents who could use some of the druidic powers but only through sigils through ink and paper, hence ink and sigil. And so Al is one of those guys. He is trying his best to teach and train apprentices, but things keep happening to his apprentices. And at the beginning of this one, his most recent apprentice has just been brutally murdered. And when he goes to his apprentice's house to try and figure out what happened, he rescues this little fey guy named Buck and Buck kind of becomes his sidekick. This is the replacement, so to speak, for Atticus and Oberon. Oberon is his wolfhound. It turns out that uh, very dark things are going on. His latest apprentice was into some nefarious dealings. He was trying to put fey creatures into servitude on the earthly plane, which is totally against the breed's rules her, I'm forgetting the word for it, she had treaties with these fey creatures, totally against it, all of these rules. Clearly his apprentice was only one man in the thing, so like, there's that problem to solve. But also he finds out a little bit more about this problem he's been dealing with himself for years, and uh, apparently if he actually uses his own voice to talk to you too much after a couple of weeks or a couple of months, depending on how much you guys talk and how much you drive, eventually people just viscerally hate him. And he's gotten around that by using text-to-speech on his cell phone. And he finds out that a curse has been placed on his head. Two curses, actually. The first one is this voice thing. The second curse is actually just the people that matter to him, his apprentices, the people he loves, they're eventually all going to die. So he has to solve these mysteries. He has to find out who placed these curses on his head and either convince them to remove them or kill them to nullify the curses. This book, Atticus has just the smallest little cameo when he's, he's getting to know Buck and they're exchanging stories and whatnot. And he's reminiscing about the time that he got to meet the fabled Iron Druid. And it was completely accidental, right place at the right time. He recognized him in a pub in Ireland somewhere or whatever it was, and they shared a meal. 
and exchanged some stories and then parted ways. That was adorable. I loved it and it was it was Atticus before this time, I believe. Loved that. The new one, it's called Paper and Blood. We actually get the Iron Druid as a character in it again. <sighs> you know the phrase, be careful what you wish for? That's totally how I feel about Paper and Blood. It's not Atticus anymore. He's going by Connor and like, as this series goes on, he is forced to take on other monikers throughout time, depending on who he's with, but in the privacy of his own thoughts, in the privacy of talking to Oberon and Granua and the Fae, the gods, he is often either his original birth name, Shehan, or his longest used moniker, Atticus. You do have him taking on other names for the sake of other people and you kind of get to know them, but at the end of the day, he's still Atticus. And in his cameo in Ink and Sigil, he's referred to both as Shehan and Atticus. In Paper and Blood, he's Connor. And I think, I think it was a good choice to only refer to him as Connor for the most part, because he is such a different character in this book. It is later on, a lot of things have happened at the end of the Iron Druid Chronicles. It is natural that he would have a progression in his character arc and he would be a different person. That makes sense, but like, he's over 2,000 years old and this is probably less than a decade later. I'm not entirely sure. It's not much later. It's not, it's not like like a decade has passed for Al, who's completely mortal. This is a decade for somebody who's already lived over 200 decades. How much more wizened and older and changed can somebody with that kind of a lifespan be? And he very much feels like an old man as Connor. There were points in Paper and Blood where he was a front and center character and they're calling him Connor. And I start to wonder like, have I missed something? Is this another name? for Atticus, or did he train an apprentice and we're far enough ahead that we're actually now referring to the apprentice as the Iron Druid? Has an apprentice taken his place? That's not the case, it's the same guy. A spoiler for this series, minor spoiler for earlier in the series, but major spoiler for the ninth book that I apparently haven't read. <laughs> so if you, if you intend to finish this series first, skip ahead about a minute. There are points in this series where Atticus is horribly maimed, should be fatal wounds, he gets better. He gets beheaded and his charms and his spells saved in his amulets resurrect him. Apparently in the ninth book during Ragnarok, he loses one of his arms. Happens to be the important arm with all the tattoos that hold a lot of his magic. And apparently, a decade or so later, whenever it is that these books are happening, he's living a quiet life in Australia, just him and Oberon. It doesn't appear that Granuel has gone with him. And he's armless. He still only has one arm. You're telling me that the 2,000 year old druid who survived being beheaded was never able to regrow his arm? I don't like this. <laughs> That aside, it's not a bad book. I'm calling it like a three and a half stars. It's certainly not disappointing enough to be a three, but the Atticus part is disappointing enough that it's not a full-fledged four. I'm probably gonna round it up to a four on Goodreads and retail sites, but it's a three and a half. This is not the return of the Iron Druid that I wanted, but if you treat Connor as an independent character and evaluate Paper and Blood as the second book in a brand new series and pretend that you haven't read the Iron Druid Chronicles and that doesn't exist, then it's a pretty solid second book. There is a little bit of middle book syndrome going on. I don't feel like a lot of progress was made toward Al's overarching plotline. Obviously the, the point of this series, the thing that will be solved by the end of it is he will deal with those curses. I don't feel like he got any closer, but we've definitely opened a lot of cans of worms in this one. We've definitely started a lot of different plot lines. And there are so many funny parts. Like, oh my goodness. The Morrigan, the, the chooser of the slain, one of the Celtic gods, 
in this series, who kind of sort of has a thing with Atticus, but kind of sort of doesn't, she's back in Paper and Blood. She has taken somebody else's body and she is trying to start again. She's trying not to be a goddess. And the people who know have been sworn not to tell Connor who she is. And it's just, it's hilarious all the slips that get made. It's hilarious watching her try to not be herself. There's also, in this book we meet, Al's running a paper shop, a print shop, to kind of be a cover for his actual job printing on paper <laughs> in a completely different way. And so he has a shop manager and he has a shop receptionist. One of those two ladies, I believe the receptionist, is Gladys who has seen some shit. And she's Canadian. And at some point, some higher deity asks Al, do you not know who Gladys who's seen some shit is? Do you not know what she is? And he goes, well, she's Canadian. <laughs> yeah, we Canadians, we, we are pretty awesome and we are pretty weird. But obviously other things are being alluded to. I love, let's just say some things are answered about Gladys who's seen some shit and some things are not. And I love the balance of answers to questions we didn't know we had, but also leaving a whole lot left to be answered later on. I hope we haven't just seen her exit. I hope she continues to be in the series. I do like the idea that this particular sigil agent is working with the iron druid because it was the collapse of the druids that made the sigil agents necessary and the iron druid is like this, this fabled guy that the sigil agents learn about in their early schooling their early teachings and it's cool that our main sigil agent is the guy who happens to actually work with the iron druid that concept is fascinating. And in that way, I hope this whole Iron Druid being a star character continues. I just, I kind of understand why Connor is no longer the Atticus we used to know. And I kind of hate it, but I also kind of like it. And it will be interesting to see if Connor gets a little closer to being Atticus again as the Ink and Sigil series goes on whether or not we get to follow him on that arc because clearly he's got a completely different personal journey going on and I don't know how much of that is going to line up with Al's journey or not. Either way, I hope that when Connor makes an exit from the series, I feel a little more satisfied than I feel right now in Paper and Blood. I will say, when I finished this one, in Sigil, I believe I rated it five stars. If I didn't, it was a very high four. You can check on the blog. I will definitely link the blog post. I said I wasn't ready for Iron Druid to be finished, and I really wanted more Atticus and Oberon, but if I couldn't have Atticus and Oberon, I will take Al and Buck. Buck is such a funny foil to Al, and the dynamic is very similar to Atticus and Oberon, except we have a Scottish guy who's done with life, and the fey creature who's now in his service, who he never intended to hire. It's it's hilarious, it's weird, it's, it's so Kevin Hearn, but it's also very fresh. I feel like Paper and Blood bringing Atticus and Oberon back into it kind of overshadows Al and Buck. I feel like the, the dynamic between Al and Buck stalled. I feel like Buck became a little more annoying when we had the fun-loving, purely innocent dog to compare to. Ink and Sigil, absolutely loved it. Paper and Blood, Middle Book Syndrome, not great, not terrible. I am looking forward to book three. And if you like Kevin Hearn's work, if you liked Iron Druid, if you liked Ink and Sigil, I do definitely still recommend checking out Paper and Blood. Go into it with a little bit of caution. <laughs> If you're looking for more to watch, I've got some suggestions up on the left side of the screen now. Don't forget to like, comment, maybe even subscribe, and if you like Live and Life Creatively, whatever that means to you, I'd love to have you along for the ride. Bye guys!